Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at how to use app settings in your Visual Studio.NET projects. So let's uh, go ahead and load up Visual Studio. I'm using Visual Studio 2019, but it'll be the same regardless of what version you're using. It's been the same as far back as I can remember. Let's create a new project. I am going to create an ASP.NET web application using the .NET framework. I'm going to make sure I'm using the latest version of .NET. It's always best practice. I'm also going to go. I'm going to go really old school with this one. I'm going to go for web forms. Obviously, generally speaking, if you're creating a web application these days, most people would opt for MVC. But let's go for web forms. I think that web form still has a little bit of life left in it. So let's uh, let's give that a crack, shall we? Right, so I'm gonna create a new web form. So new web form. To demonstrate this, I literally could have used a, a console application or web API or you know, MVC, it doesn't matter. So I just think this is probably a nice way to show you how to use app settings. So without further ado, let's go to the, where is it, the web config file. So, so you're gonna to wanna to add your app settings in here. So let's have a look where they may go. I think they go here, so let's have a look. So if we do a less than sign, we can see um, app settings pop up there on the IntelliSense. So we know we're in the right place. If, for example, you try to put them in the wrong place, so let's do it again here, it doesn't come up. So Visual Studio will give you a clue as to where you need to put the app settings. So let's run with that. Obviously finish it off and Visual Studio very kindly puts the closing tag for you. I've been coding for long enough that um, I remember when Visual Studio did not do that. So. Um, Thanks very much, Visual Studio. Much appreciated. So let's create another less than sign. And we can see we've got add. So let's click on that. Now there are two attributes that you're gonna wanna fill in. One is the key, and the other one is the value. So these are key value pairs, okay? Um, because I'm lacking inspiration, I'm going to call this one my string I think yeah my uh, string that'll do and in the value I am gonna put hello world just because it would probably be rude not to um, let's go to the web form and we're gonna want to find the code behind file which is there let's double click on that okay so it's not doing anything right now let's load it in a browser so view in a browser, view in Microsoft Edge. Okay, as you can see, we have nothing to show. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do response. Let's try again, response dot, right. And I am going to put a greater than and a less than sign. And so we're gonna inject, if you like, we're gonna inject the app uh, setting value yeah, for our key at, that we're gonna get. We're gonna put it in between these two, uh, these two less than and greater than signs. So let's build that. And let's just uh, alt tab and refresh the page. Let's see what we got. So essentially, we're gonna put our value right in the middle there. Okay. I quite like to use a, 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 a a greater than and a less than sign because you can just see like if you're trying to get a value sometimes you can get like a bit of a white space and if there's a white space you can see quite evidently if there is a white space because there's a gap so that's the only reason I'm using those signs I could have done anything really right so let's go ahead and get this uh, this uh, app setting so I'm gonna create a string I do apologize I really can't type today I'm gonna call it my string um, equal to, and this is where we're gonna get the value. 
um, from the app setting. So I think it's configuration manager. I think it's that. All right now, Visual Studio is complaining, as you can see. It's complaining because I have typed the name of a class, and Visual Studio is telling me that it doesn't know what I am talking about. But it's smart enough to know that if we hover over it and click on this little drop down arrow, it's smart enough to know that there's a class that lives inside this namespace. So that's jogged my memory. Thank you, Visual Studio. Much appreciated. So if we click on that, what it's done is it's actually imported that namespace. Okay, so if you can see, it says using system.configuration, which is where this class lives. So if we do dot app setting, so app settings is a collection, and we can access members of that collection using the open and closed square brackets. And we put the name of the app setting in here. Okay, so let's do control tab back, actually, control tab back to the web config file. I'm going to copy, uh, you know, what? I've gone off the name of that because I've already used that locally. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it Hello World. Why not? Eh? Uh, and just just in case, you know, I probably should have said this before we, we started using app settings. I assume you know why you would use an app setting. Generally speaking, you'd use an app setting because it allows you to make changes once the uh, code has been deployed uh, without having to recompile the code. So, for example, if you had some code and you wanted to install it, let's say, into three different environments, and each environment wanted to have different settings or different uh, text or you know different app settings essentially. Um, if you uh, were to keep these settings in the code, every time you wanted to deploy it, you'd have to build your code and then deploy it. Which, let's let's face it, that sucks, right? So if you store those values that can change between different environments, I mean, you could have a test or a live environment, or likewise, you could be installing the same code, the same application across different companies you know company a b and c so if you've got any values in your code that could change this is where you put them okay so now we've cleared that up let's get the value from that app setting we're going to put the name of the key in there and of course this is c sharp so we finish things off with a semicolon now i'm fairly happy with that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a breakpoint here and i'm going to debug just because I feel like doing some debugging so let's right click the web form and click on set as a start page and I'm going to click the play button so we can start debugging hopefully as it has done we will break on that line now if I hover over my string you might be thinking well why is it null well it's null because that line has not executed yet so when you set a breakpoint it will stop on that line but that doesn't mean the line is executed. We need to allow it to execute. So I'm going to click on F10, which is to step over. Okay. You can use, uh, there are some, uh, yeah, here they are. You've got step into and step over and step out. I'll probably go through what those mean in detail in another video. But for now, all you need to know is to go to the next line. We're going to click on F10. Okay. So that line is executed so if we hover over we can see that my string which is this this variable now contains hello world i don't know if you can see that but it, you have to take my word for it it contains hello world and if we look down on the left hand side here we can see from the locals yeah that we also can see that my string contains hello world so of course we want to inject that in, in between these two angle brackets or greater than or less than signs I really should uh, find out what they're officially called but it really doesn't make much difference so let's go ahead and we're going to take this string copy I'm going to remove the breakpoint because I don't need it anymore and we're going to inject it there's a whole bunch of different ways right that you can inject this string we can do it the old school way which is to do it like this we can do it like that that will work I'll prove that it works. Let's go back. Now, our page is, um, if I was to refresh this page, because we stopped debugging, it uh, stopped the proxy. Yeah. 
So that means we need to close this down. We need to right click and say view in a browser again. And that's going to load the proxy. That's going to load our page. And we have hello world, which means it worked. I'm going to give you a little tip because this is an old school way to do a string concatenation. I'm going to show you a little, a little trick to make it a lot easier. You want to put a, a dollar and we're going to get rid of all of this horrible string concatenation. I'm going to show you how to do it from the start. So say for example, you've got that string, right? And you want to put this variable into this string. The easiest way to do it is do a dollar sign, open and close, brace, and paste it in. Do you think that looks better? I do. So let's just build it. So Control, Shift, and B. And we're going to Alt, Tab, back, and click Refresh. Unfortunately, we're going to get exactly the same thing. But I'll tell you what we do. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go to the config, and we'll change this. All right, let's change it to... Um, Oh, not there obviously we don't want to change the key hello world what should we change it to I'm just going to change it to this is a test purely because I'm lacking inspiration now what's important to remember here we've changed the web config right we haven't changed the code therefore we do not need to build this project in order to see this change reflected now, if we all tab back it still says hello world and if I refresh it it will still say hello world. I just click refresh there by the way. Let me just show you. Okay, it still says hello world. Well, the reason for that is because I haven't saved this file. Okay, so control S, I've saved the file. Alt tab back, refresh the page. So F5, this is a test. Okay, so that's that is how to create and retrieve an app setting. Now I'm going to show you how to do one more thing because I think it's probably worth mentioning. I'm feeling really lazy, so I'm going to copy the previous one. I'm going to change the name and I'm going to call it my number. And I'm going to put a one in here. And I'm going to save it. Control tab back to our code behind. Now, what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to delete this. Well, actually, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to change it. I'm just going to change it. So let me copy my number. I'm going to put my number in here. I'm going to change my string to my int. And of course, I'm going to change string to int. And then I'm going to put my int in between the, uh, the two oh, greater than and less than symbol sign things. All right, so as you can see, the point I'm showing you, the reason I'm showing you this is because you can see there's a red squiggly line. And I have a feeling you guys, you might want to store ints, floats, doubles, something that's not a string. Okay, so you can probably see where I'm going with this. So we've got a line here and we've got an error. And the error is cannot implicitly convert type string to int. So if you can't implicitly convert it, it means it's not going to just do it for you like magically do it for you, you need to explicitly, you know, not implicitly, you need to explicitly tell the compiler what on earth you are trying to do. So when you put app settings into this file, they are all strings, okay? Which is why we didn't have a problem reading it into a string previously, okay? So if you're storing an int or a double or a float or whatever it is you're storing in here, if you're not storing a string, you're going to need to do something to explicitly help the compiler understand what it is you're trying to do. Thankfully, it's fairly easy to fix. Now, if I, this will not compile, right? So if I do Control Shift B to compile it, well, we've got an error. Yeah, double click on the error, takes us to the line. Right, so what are we going to do about this? What do you think we're going to do about this? Well, it's fairly, it's fairly simple. We're going to do convert dot and int32 seems reasonable, I'm sure you would agree. Open and close brackets. So we're just calling the convert class, we're calling the to int 32 method, and inside that we are passing this app setting, okay? Um, and we're gonna convert that to an int. So this, this, this code will now compile. So let me just do a control shift B, alt tab back, and let's refresh. And we get one. 
the reason we get one because dot net is smart enough to know that if we put an in in a string it's just going to basically two string it okay it's going to convert it to a string implicitly but in this instance visual studio was not happy it gave us the red squiggly line it wanted us to you know lend a hand do a little bit of work and tell it what we were trying to achieve now just to just to just to prove that this is all working correctly i'm going to create um i'll tell you what i do i'm going to create another in um actually i'm not going to create any i'm not going to create any i'm literally just going to add 10 to our existing in right which should give us 11 yeah so my int plus 10 i'm just going to prove that it works as a normal in and you can do calculations on it and all that kind of stuff so Control shift b alt tab back refresh 11 and of course if we change the value to 10 we don't need to build it Control s just to save it we are not building it alt tab back f5 20. so as you can see i think that gives you Guys, a good start in understanding how to use app settings. I've showed you how to use it as a string, and I've showed you how to use it as a, as an int. You can store a double in there. Just remember that whatever you store in here, if it's not a string, you will have to convert to something. You know, and you've got this class here, which is convert. And if you type in convert dot, you've got a whole bunch of different methods there. You've got two boolean, two int, two double, two date time, whole bunch of different. Uh, look, you've got two char, two byte, two boolean. You've got a whole bunch of different methods there that you can go ahead and convert from one type to another. And I think I've over talked here. I think that wraps it up for this video. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it useful. If you did, go ahead and click that like button for me. It helps the YouTube algorithm, as I'm sure you know. And if you want to see similar videos to this in the future, help me out and uh, subscribe. And hopefully I can help you out. And with that said, take care, everybody. And I'll see you in the next one.